I always forget how we light this thing. Oh, mother of goodness, Lord. I'm fine. I just smell like fresh cooked Filipino. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm a professional chef from the Institute of Color Education, and this is a $250 pot pie. Hi, I'm Lorenzo. I'm a home cook, and these are my $20 pot pie ingredients. Now, let me help you. Let me help you. Here, here you go. All right. It's a lot less than mine, but... I'm sure I can do something with it. Why don't they look like chicken? It's a different kind of bird, it, I bet. Or else it's really bad chicken culinary. I was gonna make a duck pot pie with a porcini buttermilk biscuit and some roasted vegetables and a beautiful porcini gravy. I'm making a mushroom biscuit? Frank, I swear to God. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. For the base of my pot pie, I had moulard duck legs and ventreche, which is a French pancetta. Ventrenchi. Trenchenche. Along with duck fat and a fine aged amontillado sherry. I don't drink sherry. I don't use sherry. I don't have sherry. So this is sherry. I was gonna make my own porcini buttermilk biscuits using porcini mushrooms and duck fat. Those biscuits are gonna rest on top of a lovely mix of roasted mushrooms and root vegetables. And of course, more duck fat, quack quack. It was gonna be amazing. Wait a minute, let me, I'm sweating a little bit. Oh, I'm making, I'm a duck. I'm a freaking duck. With Lorenzo's recipe, I have some simpler ingredients. Things you're more likely to find in your grocery store or your pantry. Bone-in chicken thighs, celery, thyme, frozen peas and carrots, and some store-bought pie dough. These ingredients may be simple, but with a little bit of technique, we can make them much better. If I had a guess, this all cost about 15 bucks. 20 bucks, all right. I guess my grocery store's cheaper than yours. Mine was 20 bucks. 250? Get out of town, yeah, brother! I got something right. This is Frank's recipe book with listed ingredients only. So where do we begin? Lorenzo's gonna use these porcini mushrooms in a bunch of different ways, so he's gonna have to tackle them first. You're supposed to go in a biscuit. I need rose, rosemary. Rose? Oh, rose, hey. We actually, we have the same color shirt. I know. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I need help. Apparently, the buttermilk biscuits have porcini in them. What, I've never had a, a mushroom in a biscuit. You're gonna actually make a powder with the porcinis and that's what's gonna go into your biscuit. So it's gonna be another dry ingredient. You're gonna take part of them and just whiz them in a spice blender and you're gonna make a powder, super delicious, concentrated, deep, dark, earthy porcini flavor. You're also gonna take the other half, soak them in hot water and you're gonna make a little bit of a stock. It's as easy as that. Thanks, Rosemary. Dried porcinis is where you go first. So let's yeah. do it. So it looks like I have all the ingredients for my porcini buttermilk biscuit. I do not bake. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Frank. Porcini mushroom powder, really potent. I can smell it from here, you guys. Baking powder, okay. Salt, you have to put salt in everything to make the flavors come out. Butter, duck fat. Why am I using duck fat in everything? Do you just want to taste duck fat in everything, Frank? I may already making duck. It smells like chicken. I don't know what the consistency is supposed to be like. I'm used to the frozen stuff that you get. You just open it and you let it thaw for about a minute or two. This is a perfectly good product, but as a chef, I'm gonna make it a little bit better. And with a little bit of skill, we're gonna make this savory, not sweet. Hee <laughs> hee. I like buttermilk really does flavor everything. It actually is a very light dough, and I don't want to work it too much, but I just want to make sure everything's incorporated. So if you overmix them, they're gonna get chewy and dense. I am flouring the board because that's what I saw on every show I've ever watched in my life. I want to shape this into, I guess, a round or ovalish kind of thing. And I'm gonna laminate some of these thyme leaves into the dough. I'm gonna take one of the rounds, put it on my board, put some thyme leaves around, take the other round, put it on top and sandwich them together so that they get little bits and pieces of thyme throughout the dough. I kind of do smell the mushrooms. It's really cool. Okay, it is that time to cut up some biscuits. Let's start. One ringy gingy. Go back to the flour. 
two ringy dingies. Four. <laughs> I just realized I was saying ringy dingy. <laughs> I've got these nice biscuits. We're gonna put it onto a tray. Let's go throw this in the fridge and let it sit for about 15 minutes. My biscuits are cut. They're ready to go. I am not a baker just yet. I am a cutter. <laughs> it is time to braise the duck. I'm basically just separating the leg bone from the thigh bone. Let's cut here. Usually you can find a little <laughs> That's not pleasant. Did you hear that crack? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, that's one ringy dingy. Chicken thighs are probably the best cut of the bird. I think that Lorenzo just wanted to simmer these in some stock, but I'm gonna change that up a little. I'm gonna roast them off. There's not gonna be enough chicken fat on these just to cook them by themselves, and I'm just gonna use some whole unsalted butter. My duck is pre 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 prepped. Duck is seasoned. We're gonna move on to braising. We're using the Von Tresh, uh, which is basically the French pancetta. I find a little bit of pork in my stews always makes it just a little bit better. It hits those kind of bacony notes. And we're gonna start searing it. The butter is melty. So I'm going to just season these really well. Salt, and then all the butter is gonna go on top. And just kind of toss everything together. I like to cook it skin side up because the skin's gonna get nice and brown and crispy, and I might want to snack on it later, okay? I, I literally could just brown this and just throw it on rice. See you later. We're gonna throw this in a 350 degree oven until it is cooked all the way through, probably about half hour to 45 minutes. And we wait until everything is golden brown and delicious. So I think it's, it's crisped up. I, I think it's time. I don't want to get too far. <laughs> so let's scoop it out. Okay, so in the same pot with the rendered oil from the Von Tresh, as well as the duck fat, I'm gonna start searing these pieces of duck. Chicken's ready, let's go get it. The chicken's slightly brown. We have some juices that have caramelized to the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna let this cool for a few minutes so that I can handle it. But first thing I wanna do is get some of my fat off of here. Let's try and keep all the bits on the tray if we can. The oil is just getting higher and higher and it's just the rendering from this beautiful fat. Swim. I have a pot here and I have a bowl. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the skin, goes in my pot, but any meat is gonna go into my bowl. I'm gonna try and save all the meat for the pie and then I'm gonna use these bones and the skin to make stock. This is absolutely way too much fat. <laughs> I've gotta take some out. It's just way too much onions, carrots. So I'm waiting for this to get lightly brown. And then we're gonna add in the duck and the montreche back in that we crisped up. It's time to make the stock. And what I have in my pot is all the bones, all the skin, all the little pieces of meat, and all of the drippings from our roasting pan. So I'm gonna add just enough water to cover it. Just lightly cover it. Turn this on high. And then I'm gonna take some of my aromatic vegetables, celery and onions, and I'm just gonna use the bits that I'm not gonna use in my pot pie and throw them in. And yes, I'm leaving the skin on. Part of the reason I use the skin in the stock is that onion skins used to be used to dye clothing yellow or off-white, so I think it dyes my stock a nice color too. We're gonna let this come to a simmer, lower the heat till it's bubbling away lightly for about 30 minutes, strain it, and then we're gonna use it for our sauce. Frank, you did a number on me here, guy. Just the, every single flavor and aroma coming off of this is just already yummy to me. Amontillado sherry is what I actually just poured in there, which is deglazing. It smells really good. Oof. It's pretty dry. I'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> no, no. I'm sure it's great for what we're doing. I see that the sherry's reduced down. Uh, I'm gonna add uh, some I'm gonna add some chicken broth. Wait. The freaking cap just ripped it off. I thought you were just kidding, but it happened twice. And if the tops of these boxes come off, you just use your knife. That is gorgeous. Don't forget to put the cap on. <laughs> and this is our broth that we made from our dry porcini that we added hot water to. All of my liquids have been put in there and I've got my bay leaf and Rose told me never forget the rosemary. So we're gonna let this simmer for an hour, hour and a half till fork tender. Just let it do its thing. Our stock has been on for about 30 minutes. I got some good color. It has great flavor. Wow. 
It's soft, I can feel how soft it is. The duck has been simmering for an hour and a half. Oh gosh almighty, that looks so good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull this over and I'm gonna strain these beautiful juices and oils, everything, the or aromatics that have been simmering in there to make our sauce. This is a vat of deliciousness. I'm gonna pour it over myself. In you go, into a bowl. I'm using a fine mesh sieve to get all of the solids out of this. I just wanna have pure stock. If we push it through, it gets a little cloudy. So if you just tap the side with your spatula, you'll see you'll get most of the liquid out. Our stock is ready. We'll set this aside. I am basically taking the meat off of this braised duck that we had been simmering for an hour and a half and separate the bones and the skin from it. Lorenzo sent me some frozen peas and carrots. They tend to have a little extra moisture in them, so I'm gonna toss them with some of our chicken fat, season them really nice, and then roast them in the oven. What that's gonna do is we're gonna add some flavor with the fat and the salt and pepper, and it's also gonna dry them out and concentrate their flavor just a little bit better. It is time to get my roasted vegetables prepped up. This is an alien that landed just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, celery root. It really smells like a celery, you guys. What do turnips t smell like? Turnips are so fresh. Yes, yes, that's why you don't smell like a turnip because you're a freaking parsnip. <laughs> parsnip smells just like a parsnip. Get these into a bowl. You can see there's some ice crystals in there and you know, they tend to get mushy if they stay in the liquid. And everyone thinks that my little bit of salt is way too much. Too bad, it's my little bit of salt. This is a butternut squash. I don't need the whole thing. I believe I'm just going to karate chop. <laughs> kind of replaces a potato if you want to put potato in a pot pie. Mies, oh, I learned that word recently. Mies your food and have them all kind of uniform. It cooks evenly that way, especially if I'm going to be roasting these, I believe. So I've got my celery root and my parsnip. And hello, morels and chanterelles. Beautiful, I should buy these, but I don't have $5,000. Oh wow, these are really, I didn't realize how delicate they were. It smells wonderful. These are so meaty, it's, it's so nice. Chicken fat, I might not need all of it, and we're just gonna toss this together. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use all of it. Try and get everything coated really well. Try and get it into like one nice layer, because we're trying to evaporate some of that moisture. So let's throw it in the oven about 10, 12 minutes, just to drive off some of the moisture. I have duck fat. Duck is very tasty. I guess we're just incorporating the flavor, oops. Uh, incorporating the flavor of duck. Salt and pepper, always. Another pepper. Ooh, that was fancy. Frank taught me that. This will really roast off nicely. Let us lay them out for uh, some roasting. Let's go to the oven, roast them off. Oh no, 18, 20 minutes. Watch them. The vegetables are telling me they're ready. Let's get them. Really no color on these vegetables. You can see that the steam is coming off of them. And that's what we want. We want to drive off some of the moisture so that these aren't kind of wet and soggy. We'll put these aside as we get everything else together and these will go into the chicken mixture. Gore G -os. Okay, my veggie portion, roasted, ready to go to the next step, you guys. The next thing we want to do is make our sauce or our gravy, because it's really more like a gravy. And this is how I'm going to do it. I have a small sauce pot, kind of over medium heat. I'm going to take some butter, and then we're going to cut our aromatic vegetables. And I want these to be fairly noticeable. So I'm going to cut them just a little bit bigger, kind of like a medium dice. I'm going to cook these out with just a little bit of color, and then we'll cut our celery as well. Rose said, before I actually make my sauce, I have to make a, what's called a truffle bourmonet. It's black truffle butter and all-purpose flour. A bermani is a close cousin of a roux, and it's usually used when you want to thicken something on the fly. When you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a little loose, you add a little bermani, brings it together. You know, what you normally do at home. <laughs> Frank, you kill me, man. Wow, I'm gonna try to use it with a spoon first and see if it's easy to work with. What I'm seeing is, I was making a mess. <laughs> Lorenzo can use a spoon for this, but I like to use my hands. Yeah, Rose said I could use my hands, but I sweating people. <laughs> I want to use nice, clean utensils. What do you think? I think it's good. The gravy in of itself is fairly bare bones. Okay, sprig or two of thyme. I don't peel it, I just throw it in. We'll let these get just slightly soft, just a little bit brown. And wouldn't you know, 
We've got duck fat. Let's start with heating up our duck fat because we have to kind of saute a little bit our uh, shallots. Some garlic. Okay, beautiful sauce that we had strained from our lovely braising. This differs from Lorenzo's sauce or gravy in that he's using his braising liquid as the base. I don't have a braising liquid here. His is kind of an integral sauce where we're using the sauce for the braise and we're thickening it up. This is more of a sauce that we make on the side. Rosemary is coming back into the picture. <laughs> We're gonna put that in there for a few minutes. Then we will thicken it slightly with a, our beautiful raw roux. Raw roux, <laughs> rut row. It is simmering and it's been doing it for about four minutes. See you, Rosemary. We're starting to get a little sizzle there, and that's good. Once we get a slight bit of brown on these onions, we're gonna lower the heat and make a roux. You can also see that a lot of the butter solids have started to caramelize on the side of the pot over here. Basically just pure butter fat. And with the flour, I'm just looking for a wet sand consistency. And you can see that right there. And I'm gonna whisk in my stock. I wanna break those lumps down. It's time to add our thickener, which is our Burn my knee. I think I'm gonna try using a whisk. Yes. It's incorporating nicely. You're not gonna taste that flour. Whenever I do something with a roux, I like to keep the spatula to get into the corners of the pot. And I like the whisk in there. So I just go back and forth, let this come to a simmer, lower it down, our salt and pepper. Let's season this up and then just let it cook for a minute or two. I'm gonna do the frank test for the thickness of this sauce. The French term is nappe. It coats the back of the spoon, you run your finger over it, and it leaves a line. Nice, thanks Frank. So my gravy came to a simmer. I'm going to remove our thyme, lower my heat. The chicken goes in, my veggies go in. Stir and fold this together. I don't want this to be super hot when I put my pastry over it because it'll melt our pastry. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this delicious goodness into my sauce and here we go, man. This is what we worked hard for. Braised duck pot pie. All right, Frank, you said it, let's do it. Let's go. It's time to put my chicken pot pies together. And I have these adorable little mini dishes. We're gonna do single serve. When I think of pot pie, I usually think of the little frozen ones you get in the supermarket that I ate when I worked in Florida at Disney World. That's what I survived on. So when I think of a pot pie, I think these little tiny ones. I scooped ice cream for six months. And that's what I did. I scooped ice cream and ate chicken pot pie. I'm going to pour all my beautiful filling into this lovely little pot, and then I'm gonna to top it off with my biscuits. Oh, pretty. Oh, Lord, help us, Jesus Christ. What I wanna do here is take my pastry dough, and I wanna put my dishes on top, just to kind of get the right measurement of what I need for each one. And I'm just gonna cut it kind of into four. I think that that'll work. And now we're gonna fill our containers. I want these to be full of chicken and not all gravy or vegetables. I'm gonna take each individual piece here and I'm gonna put it on top and I'm gonna press it down real hard and stretch it a little over the pie, right? So I just get a knife now, get it in my hand. The vent holes are there so our pastry dough doesn't puff up and break away. I have this beautiful chicken fat. And basically what this is gonna do is gonna add a little extra chicken flavor It'll help the dough brown, and then just a little kosher salt on top, and that's it. These get to go in the oven now. About 350 until they're nice and golden brown. I'm ready to put a topper on this beautiful vat of yumminess. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to cover you up. Let's see, okay, not bad. We need a little bit of egg to make it nice and golden. And this fancy schmancy flaky salt. Bake for 350 in the oven for about an hour. Let's see what happens. It's been about 45 minutes. It's time to take our chicken pot pies out of the oven. Okay, look at that. They're nice and brown. They got really nice and crispy on top. I had the tray underneath so that when they kind of bubble over, they don't drip. I could try these right now, but I don't want to burn my mouth and not be able to taste things for the next week. We're gonna let these cool for about 10 minutes, then we're gonna dig in. 
Oh, that's gorgeous. The biscuits look very nice, golden brown. They look very, very flaky. You can see it right here. You can see the layers of the biscuits. I'm quite proud of myself, actually. Uh, I'm gonna plate some up. I, I cannot wait to taste this. Oh my God. <gasps> That's pretty good. <laughs> Ooh, my stomach just growled. That just looks so inviting. They smell good, they look good. I'm not gonna use a knife, I'm gonna be a bit of a savage and just break into it because that is the way that you would do it. This is a special dinner. I'm going in. Mm. Mother of God. It's so good. And believe it or not, that pie crust is pretty darn good for a store-bought crust. Flaky, that's nice. Sopping up that beautiful sauce we made and thicken with that. What's it called again? Burmani. I mean, I would love to to show this to the world. If I show it to Frank, is 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 Frank here? I'm excited to see Lorenzo. I haven't seen him in a long time. What's hey, up, Lorenzo? How you doing, buddy? It's been it's a Frank. long time. Way too long. Way too long. Frank. 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 <laughs> oh, see, hot <laughs> pie. <laughs> Does that look adorable or what? I love it. I could eat many, many plates of this. Well, it doesn't look traditionally like a pot pie in the plate, but it eats like a pot pie. It eats better, bro. I w I've never made a biscuit before in my life. Yeah. I had heard you didn't like baking all that much. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> I learn. I learn. I just hope you think it tastes as good. You want me to taste it? Please. Is it time? Yes, please. Look at that biscuit. It crumbles. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to take a big bite. Okay, yes, I would. Mm. It's great. Oh, my God. The duck is super tender and juicy. Yeah. Oh my God, you taste the mushrooms too? Everything. So yes. give it a try, tell me what you think. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous now. Like. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I, it's, I, it's a nice. pack full of chicken. Um, mm, it's hot, nice and warm. Very, mm, that, the thyme in it is lovely. Yeah. See, that to me is what I know traditional yeah. pot pie. Yeah. That now is my fancy pot pie for guests. For all your fancy friends. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> You're about the only fancy friend I know. And I am not fancy. <laughs>